Well, ladies and gents, as promised, the Monday Market Report. Are you guys tired of this thing yet? I've been doing it for uh, for a long time now. This was actually the OG report that I started out with, oh, like eight, nine years ago. So I mean, let me know if it's uh, becoming way too uh, monotonous, I guess. <laughs> but... I actually love it. You know, each and every single week when we explore some of the hottest graded modern coins to have hit the scene, I'm telling you, there's always like a different a different combination of coins each and every single week. It's never the same. Uh, a lot of interesting things. and it, it plays very much into what, what the overall market's doing. And that's also including precious metals and other various commodities as well. As uh, as wild and crazy and zany as it is right now, um, it, it it leads to a lot of uh, a lot of difference each and every single week, and I think we could all appreciate a little bit of variety in our life. It is, of course, the spice that keeps us going. And uh, sure enough, we have yet again another very diverse week of other coins that we have never talked about before. Uh, quite a few of them, actually. Uh, again, a lot more registry set coins, you know, when one sells, another one pops up on the marketplace and it's kind of like this, um, this domino effect of sorts. And, uh, I think officially the secret's out, you know, uh, great collections is probably undeniably one of the biggest marketplaces for the top pop moderns that we see today. Um, and registry sets of all shapes and sizes appreciates that so we're going to take a look at uh actually a very healthy list today of 22 total coins that have sold here in um in the last couple hours uh great collections of course you know they end our auctions every sunday night we have just a very interesting parody of different things um each and every single week i think that's what a lot of people love they love to see um the market continue its strengthening bound forward um, you know, is there any one coin that's more splashy than the other? Generally, generally not. You know, there's a lot of coins in that kind of like one to ten thousand dollar range that fills the need each and every single week. It's also very relevant that these do pop off um, with enough regularity. It's when we see a massive slowdown in coins following kind of like this price range where we should begin to worry. Okay, is this an indication that the the numismatics market's cooling down. Are people trying to uh, move away from a certain trend, whether it's those modern registry sets? It's anybody's guess. But what we do know is that the money is very healthy. It's flying around out there. Um, so as we normally do with every single one of the Monday market reports or PCMRs, you know, we have uh, a follow-up whatnot calendar of events. Again, if you haven't heard this, I've talked about it in pretty good detail ad nauseum in there i guess you know um we have the april buyer giveaway we're giving away three gsa carson city morgan dollars on april 30th if you've bought something from any of my shows in the month of april you are in okay each item guarantees you one entry if you bought 50 items throughout the month that's 50 entries you get the big idea uh, we are going to be uh, doing an upgrade on Tuesday's show. One of the coins from the buyer giveaway will be upgraded, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome. Um, we have, I think, I think four shows remaining here uh, for the rest of the month. Okay, a uh, show every Tuesday and Friday, and then, of course, that last one. Uh, so uh, maybe three, maybe three shows left. I don't know. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. Uh, to do this again we are so so close to 10,000 followers as well and we have a pretty massive giveaway for that event as well so stay tuned for that too um, so if you're brand new to the platform uh, and you've never been on whatnot come by use my referral link down below in the description box get yourself $15 in usable store credit right away which it could equate into a couple freebie entries into the big Carson City Morgan Dollar giveaway so, uh, yeah, to act now uh, before the month is uh, all set and done. All right, let's go ahead and uh, jump into these selections from Great Collections. Thank you guys again for tuning in, and um, yeah, enjoy. 
1996 Dean Lincoln Memorial set. I think this coin, we could all speak for the fact that this is here to mainly fulfill a slot in a registry set. Uh, because no, at no point, at no point in an investor's portfolio should you even invest in a coin like this. Um, uh, again, it's a it's a very it's a very risky proposition. These are only made for one specific set. They're not investable uh, for the main fact that a lot of these coins. Um, you know, a lot of these coins eventually will have um, uh, similar grades that come out. You know, uh, that's going to just inflate that population report at the very top. Um, so when another, say, 69 grade of this 96D comes out, uh, then that's going to further erode the values of all the other coins in that in that particular grade level. Uh, so 69 red by PCGS. This is the highest grade of this coin. And this one ended up selling tonight for $2,180.25. Yes, that's an insane amount of money for a coin that is, uh, well, um, not too old. What is that, 28 years old? Can't even believe that's 28 years ago. But sure enough, man, 28-year-old Lincoln cent, $2,100. Something is definitely wrong here. Um, but when the money is flowing and people are collecting the highest grade Lincoln cents for each date, there's really nothing that we or you or I can do to stop or slow that down. All right, it's it's kind of a uh, very interesting, very interesting situation, and it's uh, it's going to keep on living forever. Uh, the next one that we have here, uh, yeah, another registry set coin. Uh, we normally associate the eighty four with the doubled ear variety. You know, this week we didn't have one; we just have a regular uh, high graded mid state sixty nine red. Another one on the list. Uh, first couple of years out from the uh, the new composition here, where they coded zinc. Um, zinc cores, all right. So, uh, yeah, they, they had this kind of early look where the surfaces were a little bit wavy and pebbly, and that's totally normal. Um, this particular one right here is a huge coin, uh, you just don't see this kind of grade. It is a the highest grade imaginable for an 84. Three thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars and twenty five cents was the uh, the hammer price on this one here this evening. And we also have this 1982 large date copper coated zinc composition. Again, you know, it's it, it's it's a coin that unfortunately, based off of its price tag, is closely associated with some pre-1933 gold pieces out there. And um, it chokes me up every time I have to say that because when you when you have to put one on one end of the scale and the other on the other side, it's like you know, this kind of money, which by the way is $1,805.62 for this one, um, for a registry set coin. I, I mean, is it a piece of gold or this thing, you know, and you can make the argument that I would say 90% of the people out there would prefer the gold. All right. So, um, again, I, I've been asked this a multitude of times. Do I recommend anyone grading the moderns? Well, I've tried it out, and it's not all that. Uh, I've ended up spending many thousands of dollars during this campaign. Uh, as you guys remember, it was like back in 2012, 2013. And um, I, I broke even at the end, but not without some uh, harrowing type of uh, ordeals, you know, that mainly consisted, you know, the wife and family. It's it's like, you know, we're throwing away good money after bad. So it's, uh, again, incredibly risky. I personally wouldn't recommend it. It's not investable. Um, you know, it's just, I, I guess, leave it be is the best way to kind of uh, describe, you know, these modern registry coins. Uh, same here too, 72D. Of course, I was, I was grading a lot of... Uh, uh, 1960s Lincolns, okay, it did did pretty well, um, but 72D certainly falls in kind of like that realm of a lot of like dog shit quality coins that were produced, and that's that's a big reason why that there's a hot pursuit for some of the finer grades of not only 1960s but 70s early Lincoln memorials. This one here is a mid-state 67 plus full red example, and this one, much like the 84. Uh, ended up selling for three thousand four hundred eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Another um, coin over three grand, and it just keeps getting crazier than that. 
Uh, quite possibly the best looking 1960 Lincoln I've laid eyes on. Um, you know, not not so much about the quality, but the overall eye appeal. I mean, I love the color on this. It's subtle. But at the same time, you know you have something special. And not to mention that it's the small date variety Philadelphia 1960, which by its own right is, uh, is a scarce one to start out with in high grades. Now when we get to a 67 plus, full red you might as well consider it your white whale right this is a trophy for any 19 uh, 1960s lincoln era registry um yeah so with everything considering the small date the high grade top pop as usual uh the coloring this one ended at four thousand six hundred four dollars and fifty four cents and uh, a mighty fine coin at that. Uh, I still would never invest in something like this, but if I did have it, I would sell it immediately. And uh, 1950s Lincolns, uh, again, the quality wasn't there on Philadelphia struck examples, but we have a 58 here and all of its uh, kind of like sun-kissed orange kind of glow to it, which is kind of cool. PCGS Mint State 67 Red seems to be the top pop for a lot of these 1950s coins. Um, this one right here also bears the CAC green bean sticker, which is a cross certification. Just really giving this one uh, the kudos that the grade fits the coin, if not maybe a little bit undergraded as well. This one here sold for $2,819.25. And uh, of course, the coins that probably mean the most are the most earliest dated ones. Now, 1924D... Um, you can make the argument that this is uh, this is kind of like in that little short kind of collection of semi-key dated coins. It's got the lower mints, uh, mintages. Uh, it's got quality that was quite suspect for its time. Um, you, you'd be hard pressed to find one that you know we would consider to be the perfect coin if we are comparing it to say the fifty-eight that we just looked at a second ago. Um, this one here. PCGS older older green holder OGH is what they call it mint state 65 red now in comparison to that 58 we just looked at this one here is a couple grade points lower but you know to a lot of the untrained eyes there, there's like really no matching red here um, but that is again um, kind of like you know that that's part of the uh, the era in which these were produced. The quality was not there. Uh, we were kind of approaching that um, that Great Depression era where a lot of the coins were were used and abused as they intended to be. And uh, this one does have a CAC green bean. bean. Uh, this one is just overall a very special coin, and that's the big reason why that it ended at fifteen thousand seven hundred sixty dollars and twelve cents here tonight. Um, and it's always a treat when you're able to talk about any 1920s Denver or San Francisco coin that grades a full red. Um, they are uh, more in exception than the rule. Okay, so kind of tough act to follow, obviously, because, uh, you know, some of those Lincolns were really nice, but we are here in Nichols. And Nickel Land, uh, well, they, they, uh, they paid to play, that's for sure. Uh, so 1961, Jefferson Nickel, this is a Philadelphia minted coin. Uh, I do have a little bit of exception here with this one because NGC graded this as a 66 plus with five full steps. And I don't know about you guys. I'm just not seeing the five full steps on this one. Um, a little bit, uh, a little bit of an overshoot here with this grade. Uh, so, you know, I thought I'd let you guys know that that's how I personally feel about it. Uh, you know, it could look better in hand. I'm not sure. Um, but the new photographer for great collections has been simply knocking it out of the park, uh, for lack of a better word. And so, you know, there's simply just no excuse uh, to be able to take this good quality photos and to just take a look and say, I don't know. I, I think, you know, this one might be like three full steps, which, you know, the grading companies do not grade these off of that kind of curve. They don't. Um, so with that being said, you know, kind of a stiff price here on this at $2,706.75. The best move here, put in a registry set. Do not cross grade it. Do not take it out of that slab. Uh, it's worth so much more in the slab with the five full steps than it is. Uh, you know, possibly uh, upgraded, you know, through PCGS or someone else. 
Uh, we did cover just a, a smacker of a proof 1950s nickel last week, and we have another one here today, 1956. Um, you know, f full deep cameo frost uh, on these 50s dated uh, Jeffersons were virtually non-existent, but if you did come across one, more than likely those dies were prepped just a few strikes ago. Uh, so this one here is just an absolute banger. You have the nice dark fields on there that are just dripping with that mirrory black. Um, the frost is very bright and very glowy on this one. PCGS Pro 69 Deep Cameo. Again, another fine grade here. And uh, $7,818.75 was the ultimate sale price on this one. And it got swooped up. Uh, we do have a couple, actually, really nice nickels, you know, all coming from an era, uh, the World War II era that we all so adore a lot, especially when we get to the couple silvers that we did highlight here this week. 46S, uh, believe it or not, is on this list for the grade in the 67 full steps, but also the very light, subtle pastel coloring on the coin, uh, which, again, doesn't offend a whole lot of people, but does give just the right amount of originality to it. Uh, this one here sold for $4,612.50. Uh, I'd say that's a really solid market for a coin of this ilk. And if we were going to find another one that did come to the marketplace, um, odds are, chances are, that 67 is not going to be a great on there. It's just a really tough one to obtain on a 46S. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, here is one of two of those wartime silvers, you know. Um, the silver, just adding just a little bit of it to any composition, kind of changes its genetic makeup. Like, over time, it's the type of coin that only gets finer with age. You know, kind of like, you know, uh, a nice bottle of Chianti or, you know, some Limburger cheese. You know, some maybe not the best example. Maybe just how about cheese, for that matter. Um, this one, 45D. In a mid-state 68 full stepper, of course, you know, this is kind of like the ultimate uh, appearance of the coin after uh, after being stored for so many decades. So yeah, something that is just beaming with all sorts of glow here. This particular one, because of like the total package, $8,210.25. That is a rich amount of money for a coin that... Some would say you could have plucked from an old Dansko album for about fifteen dollars. You know, mic drop right there. Uh, we also have this forty-four ass, a little bit more on the subtle side as far as the over total appearance. A uh, mid-state sixty-eight plus. They did not award full steps on this one, so this is very much heavy with the numerical grade, and understandably, it's very clean. And I do like the pastelli, light yellows, magentas. That's kind of encapsulating this one uh dollars 88 again that's a price tag that we're all familiar with on coins that do have the full steps this one did not and we also have a couple of buffalo nickels that i figure is worth some mentioning here uh with the color does you have this golden rod yellowish 1930 ad it's a very common date in high grades Mid-State 68, uh, that's a bomb of a grade right there, but it's by no means the top grade. So even one at this, uh, what I call second tier level, still very relevant. And with a price tag of $4,060.12, it's anything but, um, it, you know, just a, another run-of-the-mill 38D. Um, you know, Mid-State 65s are generally very easy to obtain in that $50 to $60 range. Um, and you're not too far away from a 68. You know, it really boils down to the strike and the cleanliness of the coin at the end of the day. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we did cover a, uh, an exceptional 31S last week. Here's another one. Uh, this, uh, this one, our one, I believe this is our, no, we have one other coin uh, on the list that's graded by um, everybody's coin grader that they love to hate, especially the dealers, CAC G. Uh, certified Acceptance Corporation grading is hot on the heels of all of the other major players in the grading space. And uh, they have this one right here in a Mint State 67. Again, my goodness, uh, what a great looking coin. <coughs> and uh, there's been a lot of conversation because this company specifically uh, 
pays, uh, you know, but, not pays, but 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 they are aiming for the collector and that servicing rather than doing kind of like the bulky kind of corporate, um, you know, deal. Yeah, where you have a lot of dealers that are just simply just you know pummeling a bunch of coins into a service and then you know just ringing it out. I guess. Um, so this one has a little bit of a yellow on there. Very nice, kind of a carnation yellowish kind of color. Um, and this one um, boggles me, boggles me. I mean, uh, I forgot what the last PCGS example sold for, but this one here in CAC G form, $16,312.50. Now, I'm going to have to go back and see what a same graded, you know, 31S of PCGS plastic or NGC for that matter went for. I'm willing to bet it's not, it's not this money. All right, so... A kind of interesting development here with what we're seeing from CAC G. Believe it or not, it was a Roosevelt dime. Now, it's not, not a huge banger by any stretch. It's a 51D, kind of semi tough grade and, and date here. Uh, Mid state 68 full bands. Okay, they do grade on a uh, on a strike designation. This one, of course, it's here because of the color, uh, all that crustiness on both sides of the coin. Um, you know, gives the originality of the coin what it deserves. Fourteen hundred twelve dollars and eleven cents for this one. Uh, we also have a forty-five D. Uh, you know, again with some of the more darker tone on here. Uh, still very pretty, especially on a coin of this type. Uh, that is a perennial favorite among type collectors. And uh, sixty-eight full bands on this one. Three thousand four hundred eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents. On a, a rather common date that you could find in mid-state all day long for a little bit of money. And on the quarters, we do have a few here to talk about. 82P, just, uh, you know, a, a registry set piece. Uh, what we do know about early 80s Washington's is they can be a little bit tough at the highest grade level. And they just don't have the luster uh, to match. Mid-State 67 Plus was a grade on this particular example, um, and it still ended up managing a $1,293.75 here tonight. Uh, 55, here's our other coin graded by CACG as well. Uh, this time, a very, very tough, uh, a very tough date, and a lot of people don't know it. Um it ended up making its way into CAC plastic with this kind of toning, you know. And uh, from what I've heard, CAC G can be a little bit critical about um, about toning on a coin, you know. Uh, but you know, here we are. Here's one example uh, that ended up ringing out two thousand seven hundred fifty-six dollars and twenty-five cents. Um, sure to please, you know, either a registry set, which CAC G is doing a registry set, and that is live today. Um, along with new memberships. So if you're looking to uh, to grade out with someone different, they are available for that. Uh, we also have a, you know, first year, 1932. This is a dark crustiness, but when you look up, down deep into the, um, the multiple layers of color on this one, you can see a kaleidoscope of colors. And I think that's really cool. Um, th this one, the, the pictures are fine. You know, uh, I think they could be a lot more bright you know, which will accentuate some of the coloration here. Um, this is a love it or hate it thing. Okay, you either love toning or you don't, and that that's gonna be it. You know, there's no there's no middle ground here. Mid state sixty seven on this piece, and uh, it did sell for four thousand and fifty dollars. So uh, quite a bit of premium. Uh, but I've seen this particular date without a D or S mint mark sell for a lot more. Uh, we do have a couple standing libs. How about a 29S? Uh, not what I consider to be like a rarity, but this is uh, one of the highest graded specimens I've seen in quite a while. As a mid-state 67 with full head. Again, that's a strike designation on the coin. And uh, a great looking piece. Again, standing liberty quarters. If you haven't owned one in mid-state condition, um, definitely keep that one high atop your list. Um, they are very attractive coins. And uh, this particular one, uh, hammered at $6,131.25. Uh, we also have a 20S, which, believe it or not, is more scarce than some of the other tougher dates, like a 19 or a 19D, things like that. Um, 
because we just don't see a lot of them with the full head strike designation. A lot of them are really quite flat. This one, however, NGC uh, it gave the nod to in the full head department. And because of that, this one, even in a 63, which is very average, $4,500 was the sale to price on this one. And another coin with a big price tag. And we don't talk about Walking Liberty House all too much here on the Monday Market Report. But we got to throw a little bit of kudos to this just honest, you know, just very, very regular 1939 Philadelphia Walking Liberty half dollar, which, you know, uh, in a lot of mid-state grade levels is very easy to find and very affordable. All right. So, um, however, in a mid-state 68, this one is surely going to go in a Walking Liberty registry set, which, by the way, last time I checked, nobody's really breaking up Walking Liberty registries. They are, they have been, uh, High and tight, a lot of those collections are going to be socked away for a long time. Um, so when one comes across like this one that is going to end up in there, you know, we must take our time to just kind of appreciate it for what it is, a true beauty, um, but not necessarily a rarity. This one sold for $6,019.88. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the encore of the Monday Market Report. Uh, the information provided today is for educational use only, guys, not financial advice. Always collect and or grade responsibly. Uh, that's going to go ahead and do it for this one. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Always a pleasure. I want to thank you guys for making this one of the hottest uh, report videos, bar none, on the graded coin scene out there today. So uh, thank you. I do appreciate it. This is where I bid you a fond farewell. Have a great week. Enjoy your Mondays. And I'll see you on the next coin video.